let's talk about Linux kernels and device drivers. A lot of people say, well, my Wi-Fi driver doesn't work, or my NVIDIA card doesn't work, or uh, my Magewell capture device doesn't work out of the box with Linux. But most of my systems here do work out of the box because device drivers in Linux work completely different than Windows, where Windows you're always tacking things on. In Linux, it uses something called a monolithic kernel and all of it's built in. So in a perfect world, your PC will just boot up and everything will work great. But let's talk about how you would add on functionality or device drivers. They're not really called that in Linux. They're more called modules that you'd add in uh, and, and basically on top of the Linux kernel to make some compatibility happen if it exists for your device. But uh, let's go into that as I'm going to use this box right here as an example. This is my recording box. Every day when I start uh, this recording, I walk into the studio. I have a little stream deck here. I hit record and all the magic happens. It's using a lot of proprietary things that I normally was using Windows for. And I was kind of criticized because uh, I cover Linux quite a bit on this channel. And I was using Windows for a lot of my recording because of the proprietary nature of these drivers. But I got them all working and uh, kind of switched out and bought all this new hardware that is Linux compatible, even though it is proprietary. So uh, the two proprietary products that I will go over is the NVIDIA card. I'm using the 1660 for the NVENC uh, version 2. It's the Turing encoder. So I uh, get a lot crisper recording and it's all real time streamed right in making this video file. And then also the secondary card is the actual Magewell card. This isn't actually built into the Linux kernel either and requires an installation of a, a, a module. So let's get into Linux modules. I'm going to jump on the desktop, run an LSPCI so you can see kind of what we're working with here. So let's go ahead, jump over to the desktop and I'll run LSPCI and you'll see kind of all these different devices I'm running. So let's grab the NVIDIA ones first so you can see what I'm using here. We'll just grep NVIDIA and you can see that. And then let's grab Magewell as well. So with Magewell, you'll see I have the NVIDIA and the Magewell cards I just talked about. Now, how does this work? And I'm going to use my package manager. This is Arch Linux, but if you're a Debian user, it works the exact same way. Like I said, Linux is Linux, and it's just the commands you use are just a little differently. So all I'm doing here is just going to do Pacman, which is the package manager in Linux. And I'm just going to query my installed packages and grep uh, the Linux kernel. So from the Linux kernel, you'll see that I'm using the LTS and then also the LTS headers right down here. You'll see these two packages and uh, these packages are kind of interesting. So you'll either probably be using regular Linux or Linux LTS. Both use just different versions of the kernel. If you are doing a lot of these modules, I do recommend that the LTS release because LTS is going to be a little bit better for a lot of uh, compatibility and those types of things. When you're using some of these modules to add on, you don't want your kernel changing very often. And since I'm running Arch Linux, which is a rolling release, which means it's always going to be kind of like bleeding edge, that kernel is going to be changing almost on a daily, if not weekly, uh, manner. So you got to watch out when these rolling releases. So I use the LTS just so I stay on that older release just a little bit longer and maintain compatibility. Uh, but with that said, it's not just what uh, kernel you're on. You have to actually add stuff to it. So first off, you need the headers package. Uh, some people run without headers, which is fine. Um, but since we're using something called DKMS, and I'm going to go ahead and show that. This is a modules package that requires the Linux headers package. And this makes it so we can add modules on top of the Linux kernel. Now, obviously, we got NVIDIA here. One that isn't on here because it's not part of the Pac-Man or my package manager and I had to manually install is the Magewell card. Now the Magewell card, I had to literally reach out to support because they say they support Linux and say, hey, I'm using Arch Linux uh, kernel version 5.4. Can you send me a driver? And they actually bundled up a driver, sent it over to me that wasn't on their website and I was able to get that working. And that turnaround time was about 24 hours. So really impressed with the Magewell team and their support 
getting those drivers to me as I wasn't expecting really that to work out of the box when uh, I saw the issues I ran into. But now that you know that DKMS and the modules on how to stack those in, you can add support. Now there's certain things that uh, can also add support like such as the Linux firmware here. Sometimes there's something called proprietary blobs and what that really means is some Wi-Fi cards are locked down and they don't want to open source their drivers. This causes an issue which means they can't bundle in a lot of Wi-Fi cards. I don't know why Wi-Fi is such an issue but it is <laughs> as far as computer hardware because there's so many different manufacturers and so many of them don't want to open source those drivers so they want you to use like special tools and you kind of see this in windows based systems where you'll have you know the built-in windows wi-fi tool but then you also have like the intel uh connection mm -hmm. engine or whatever the hell it's called on there and you'll just have these things just kind of put on there tacked on and, and some of it is for tracking some of it's because they just want some weird feature that isn't part of the native client i don't know <laughs> either way uh those things are sometimes not compatible with Linux. And they solved this by doing the Linux dash firmware package and kind of tacking that in there sometimes. Other times, it's just not compatible at all. So I've run into this personally um, on a, a new pet, uh, HP laptop that I've actually bought in the store. So um, that's basically how Linux packages and how it gets bundled in. But I, I kind of want to talk about uh, open source versus closed source so you guys kind of have a better understanding what is compatible when you need to use device drivers and such so let's uh, let's go full screen here and talk about that so when it comes down to the actual drivers and you when you need to do it when I bought my HP laptop out of the gate it didn't work like at all so that was kind of a major issue for me as uh, I couldn't connect to Wi-Fi. Now I went out and bought like a USB dongle, plugged it in and just used the Wi-Fi off that for literally a couple months. And then there was a kernel update. I updated and sure enough, that driver got added to it because when that laptop released, I bought it almost the day of release and those drivers just weren't available. Now Linux has gotten a lot better over the years and this was about a year ago or maybe maybe two years ago um, when I was actually trying this on because I've used Linux on my laptops longer than I have for my desktops for some reason. Uh, I think mainly just because I use them in a lot of business environments. But needless to say, I did have that issue and how I fixed it was mainly just using a different device. And I know that's not what a lot of people wanna hear to when it's Wi-Fi devices. But just know, one, if it's a brand new laptop, good chance in a couple months it's gonna work. But if you have like a three or four year old laptop and the Wi-Fi is not working and you've tried both the firmware module and you've looked up support and know that there's no like DKMS module that you can tack on, well, you're gonna probably have to get a new Wi-Fi device. So that kind of stinks. But I want to say this and just kind of close this out as Linux, and how it handles devices is so much better than Windows, like a lot better, because you don't need to grab all these independent things. This stream PC over here is a poor example, but I wanted to use this example because it's something where I needed to get a lot of proprietary stuff working. Most of my other PCs, almost every single one of my other PCs, two laptops and about five desktops, all of them. I just install Linux and everything works. That's because everything's built into the kernel and out of the gate. It's just a fantastic experience. There's no going and downloading and all that business that you have with Windows. And that's a very, very big thing. So I wanted to just kind of touch base with you today on today's video and just say, hey, don't worry about it. Drivers in Linux are way better than Windows. But if you do run into one of these obscure drivers, uh, not all is lost. But uh, in the worst case scenario, you can swap it out. But with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.